Do you know the difference between GPT-5, agents, and AGI? Well, truth be told, before I made this video, I would have had a hard time really describing the differences between those concepts. But the powerful major players of these AI organizations are signaling to us that a large shift is coming, that there are some much more powerful tools on the way. And this video is all about trying to understand what those tools are, what they might be able to do, and most most importantly, how we can prepare for them. This is a video for proactive marketers who want to stay ahead of the curve and future-proof their skill set in an increasingly AI-driven marketing landscape. In the first section of the video, we're going to go through each one of these tools and understand their similarities and their differences. Then we're going to look at how to prepare for this coming new advancement in technology that will only further disrupt what we've been doing as marketers. If you're new to the Blazing Zebra channel, I want to welcome you and thank Thank you once again for joining me on my mission of helping marketers and entrepreneurs around the world understand this powerful new technology. I've got a link in the description to a cheat sheet for this video. I make these for almost all of my videos. I have dozens and dozens of them in there. So if you're getting something out of these videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon and getting access to all of that stuff as well as some code and some one-on-one -on -one coaching options as well. So diving right into the similarities and differences between GPT-5, Agents, AGI, and even what might be coming beyond. If we think about GPT-5, this is the large language model that will be an advancement on GPT-4. It'll be doing a lot of the same things that GPT-4 is doing, but it'll just be doing them better. It might be making decisions better when you're strategizing with it. It might be able to create copy that's a little bit better, a copy that's longer. It'll probably be able to understand a lot more input in its context window when you're loading in information. So GPT-5 is primarily a language-based model, but it will improve on all the things that we sort of know and love with GPT-4. I found this really cool resource while I was doing research for this video, and it's everything we know about GPT-5. Starts with some basic stuff, but then it goes through this whole history of what GPT-1 was in 2018, GPT-2 it's basically when I really started to pay attention to this walks you all the way through these um, what folks are guessing that GPT-5 might be because there hasn't been a ton of very clear explanation of what it is but there are a lot of people hypothesizing about it and like I mentioned it'll be much larger the parameters that are used to train these models will be much bigger for GPT-5 in addition to text, it will probably support or for sure will support speech and image and increase accuracy, increase context window so it has more working memory. And it's always looking like as these things increase, they will become more and more cost effective. Okay, so now moving into agents. So agents are different than GPT-4 and GPT-5 because they are connected to the world in various ways. Where GPT-4 and GPT-5, the large language, language models themselves are really kind of siloed. They can get text in or images in or speech in and give text out or speech out or images out. These agents can do more than that. So you can think of these agents as being able to uh, copy and paste, update, update a spreadsheet, go in and log into your MailChimp account and update a few things or actually send off an email. So the large language model is part of the agent. It is the brain of the agent. Uh, the agent is has more power than that. I should say that it can interact with its environment. So you can think about this as a, um, you know, a robot who can sense the world and go around and understand what's happening around it and make actions or take actions upon the environment. But I think before we get those actual physical robots, we're going to be getting these digital robots who can go from one application to another and carry out very sophisticated workflows similar to what many knowledge workers are tasked with currently. But you can think of these, they are focused on a task completion. So this could be as simple as a chat bot, but it could also be as complicated as a self-driving car. Here's another great resource I found with regards to agents put out by BotPress. They're, they should know they've built some pretty extensive agents. So this has a good definition of it, but I, what I like about this 
is that it breaks down multiple different types of agents. So this was helpful for me just thinking about, you know, there's not just going to be one type of agent. There's going to be simple agents. There's going to be utility-based agents, learning agents, so agents that are capable of updating their own knowledge and getting better and better at a specific task, uh, and, you know, a few others listed here here also has some applications here mentions autonomous vehicles virtual assistance gaming healthcare finance customer service cybersecurity education supply chain and logistics so as you can see these agents are going to impact many different industries and now we're getting into AGI one of the biggest buzzwords in all of AI stands for artificial general intelligence and this is basically a human level intelligence across many areas so match or exceeding human capabilities in reasoning, problem solving, learning, and adapting to new situations. I think that's key, where this is actually learning and improving as it goes. I think that is a major difference here because you might say, well, you could argue GPT-4 can do a lot of these things already, but the one thing that it can't do is continuously learn and update itself. That's sort of what I think of when I think of AGI, are these systems that are able to rapidly enhance their own capabilities. I know that's kind of scary to think about, but this is what they are saying is coming down the pike very soon, and it may already exist. In fact, if I had to bet on it, I would guess that it does already exist inside of OpenAI. They've almost gone as far as saying as much. They're just waiting to roll it out, probably doing a lot of safety testing and making sure that the world is ready for something like this that can really dramatically change uh, the way that we work. One helpful way to think of these is like building blocks. So they kind of stack one on top of the other. The GPTs, four, GPT-5, these are the brains. These are the large language models. This is what most people are familiar with and what they think of when we talk about generative AI. Agents are just starting to make it onto the scene. You could think of Microsoft's Copilot as an agent that is allowing you to update different spreadsheets, slides, etc. cetera. Uh, the custom GPTs had a little bit of this agent agent capability, but fairly soon we're going to see these agents take on more responsibilities. These will be able to do a lot of different tasks moving from one software application to another. Then AGI is then one step above that, which is basically these advanced LLMs alongside many other technologies, including agents that will allow it to achieve a human level intelligence. And I would also add to that a human level set of capabilities. Okay, so what are we going to do about about all of this? How are we going to prepare for these new technologies that promise to disrupt basically everyone's jobs, at least if you're a knowledge worker? I know that that is a uh, kind of a scary thing to think about. For me, it's hard to think about anything else, and that's what I've put together here, some ideas of how we can prepare for this based on process documentation, building a flywheel, uh, developing better delegation skills, and using AI for skill acquisition. So documenting your processes. This, I think, is something that if you can get your house in order, you are going to be way ahead of the game with any new advancement in AI because a well-documented process gives you deep insights into the steps, decision points, and desired outcomes. This understanding is vital for identifying areas where AI can help. Mapping out your process can reveal inefficiencies or bottlenecks that should be addressed before AI integration, and then evaluation. So this documentation will offer you a baseline against which you can measure the success of your AI implementations. I've struggled with this. My documents have always been too long and too detailed. For me right now, I'm focusing on just one or two pages that will outline the basic steps of a specific process without getting too nitty gritty and to you know, click here and go there. I don't think you need to worry about that. The AI is going to be able to figure that stuff out just like a good assistant would be able to figure that stuff out. I would say a maximum might be 10 pages for a very complicated process. Uh, if you're getting longer than that, you probably need to break those up into sub-processes. But if you have clear documentation, you can then have something that you may be able to just feed into the AI to do, or at least you'll know which steps in that process the AI might be able to take care of. Next is building the flywheel. So this is my approach to how I tackle all of these advancements that are coming at us very, very quickly. I've seen a lot of folks be successful when they start 
start to really think like software engineers and think about their agency or their department as a machine with all these different components. Right now, each quarter, I'm spending a lot of time doing intakes. For this quarter, I'm looking for two to three things that are really worth testing. This is a mix of that they're simple and they would have a high likelihood to succeed as well as be incredibly useful. So very high leverage because there's so many different items that are coming at you, different software pieces, different uh, process and different ways to think about things. I'm collecting all of that up. And then at the end of the quarter, I look at which two or three of these have the highest likelihood to succeed and are going to be the most useful. Then I'll spend the next quarter rigorously testing those things, trying to see if I can get some value out of maybe it's a new piece of software or maybe it is a new process that would really be a game changer for me and my team. And then the next 30 days are implementing uh, whatever I have found to work there. And I think less is more here. So really finding the two or three things worth implementing and then ideally uh, through testing, etc., finding one or two that are actually enhancing your process. And the idea is that all of these things are running in tandem. So you're constantly doing this research, finding two or three high leverage ideas, constantly testing the ones from the previous quarter and then implementing the ones that have passed the tests of that previous quarter. So this is sort of a rolling flywheel of intake, experimentation, and implementation. You may want to assign some of these to specific team members or specific departments, but the idea that you've got something cooking in all these three areas, you're continuously finding new things, vetting them, and implementing them in a systematic way. It's going to help you get as much as you can out of these new technologies without being distracted by getting tons of things pelted at you from every direction, trying a few things here or there. That's just a recipe for getting frustrated and getting burnt out and having a hard time keeping up with all this. So next, enhancing your delegation skills. So this is big. I think a lot of people who uh, have not managed before are going to be in charge of managing these AIs. And if you've never you know, given clear instructions to anyone, it's very challenging. So here are some thoughts on this, getting clear on your objectives. So being able to explain exactly what you want uh, to be achieved. The next step is task breakdown. So breaking down each process into smaller steps and then communication of expectations. So these are all skills that if you know how to do them with humans, you're going to be ahead of the game when it comes to delegating tasks to AI. Finally, monitoring and feedback. This is huge. Not only does it take time to develop this skill, but this is the part of AI that a lot of people miss. They think, oh, well, I just gave it these instructions and it didn't do very well. AI is not valuable to me. But what they need to be thinking of is how can they give better feedback and really collaborate with that AI to get what they want out of the uh, large language model. I've got a ton more resources on this in the cheat sheet. I could almost do a whole video on clear delegation to AI. Skill acquisition is a critical part of keeping up with all of this technology. For me, this happens to be one of the most enjoyable parts. I have loved using AI for personalized learning paths and adapting different programs to specifically cater to my strengths and weaknesses, breaking things down into micro learning modules, and then doing some real world simulations. So potentially doing some role playing, etc. when you're trying to master new skills. I've got a video on one prompt to improve your day every day that I will link to that is a good glimpse of how you can use AI to improve your skills on a day to day basis. Okay, I hope you got something out of this and are now a little more clear on the differences between GPT-5, AGI, and agents as these things start to roll out. I think understanding these concepts and again, most importantly, what you can do about them is going to be critical. I've, I've got a cheat sheet that includes all the resources and a ton more, especially around delegation and process documentation. So I'll put a link to that in the description. That is for my Patreon supporters that help me keep this channel going and help support this mission of empowering marketers and entrepreneurs around the world with these practical and actionable AI skills. I've also got some really fun coaching options in there. I have recently launched an office hours program, which is just a time each week where we can all jump on a quick call and you can fire questions at me. We can discuss best practices, etc. But otherwise, thanks for watching. Please feel free to give me a like, a subscribe, hit me up in the comments if any of this was confusing. If you'd like a deeper dive into any of these topics, I'd be happy to consider that for future videos.
future videos. And again, thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video. Make the dreams come true.